everybody Ann here sitting here on the porch having my coffee with all of you and it's special coffee I put a chocolate protein powder down in it so it's sort of like a meal I had a couple scoops of um, powdered milk and it's kind of like a yummy chocolatey mocha latte whatever so that's what I have for breakfast every morning during the summer um, just watching the chickens. I've already done chicken chores. In fact, I've already gone around and I snipped some stuff off the tomato plants. So hopefully they'll do better. But I had a wonderful day yesterday. The neighbor's kids came over and one by one, first, the second oldest boy, I'm not going to give their names. I'm going to think of some nicknames to give them. And I'll tell you why I don't like people giving kids real names on the internet. Um, one by one, they came over and they said, Miss Ann, Miss Ann. And I'd come out um, and they had these beautiful colored pictures that they had made for me. And they wrote to Mrs. Ann. Um, they put their names on them and they told me the name of the, the character that they colored. And so I'm going to show them to you now. Oh, they are just so adorable. Here's the first one. It came from their second oldest boy. He, he was the first one to bring these over, and look at this. He, he named it Romeo because he colored it just like Romeo. Look at, he captured the greenish, bluish kind of feathers that he's got, and he just did all kinds of beautiful shading, and look at, he kind of did that too. Looks exactly like Romeo to Mrs. Ann. <laughs> they call me Miss Ann, though. He put a little heart there. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's a little plantain leaf because I'm not going to show their names. And here's the second one he brought over. It's a doggy. It looks like he had trouble naming it. He couldn't decide what he was going to name it. So he decided to name this doggy Harley Davidson. Maybe I should call him Harley Davidson. Second oldest boy. Hmm, I'm going to have to think about that. But he did such a good job. Look at that. He colored in the lines and everything. And next, their youngest son came over with a fistful of pictures he had colored. Now, I think he came back a couple times and brought me more pictures. But, yep, they named this one. He named him um, Foxy Lady. <laughs> Foxy Lady to Mrs. Ann. Look at that. He colored this Foxy Lady Fox so well. Colored inside the lines. Looks beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm going to have to think of a nickname for him, too. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. This is from their littlest boy, and he's just a little tiny thing, but he is so cute. And next, he colored me a fish, and this is a catfish. And I told him, I'm going to eat this up. He didn't give this catfish a name, but he did a really great job. And then he colored me a sheep. Yes, he did. He brought this over. And then he colored it. What is this? Is that an otter? Oh no, it's so cute though. And he colored it all by himself. That is so, so gorgeous. I love it. I was just so thrilled. Every time one of those kids would come over and they would like come up to my gate or come inside the gate and Miss Ann, Miss Ann. And they'd have one of these pictures in their hands. Look at that. I miss getting stuff like this from my own grandkids so very much. So this is just such a pleasure and a joy. These next couple of pictures were colored by their youngest girl. I think I'm going to call her, um, I think I'm going to call her Sunshine. So whenever I say Sunshine, that refers to their youngest daughter. She is just so, so sweet. She colored this fishy for me. I don't know, kind of looks like a bluegill. It looks tasty though, doesn't it? Yes, that is so cute. All right, let's see if the next one has her name on it. Nope. She colored me a monkey, and this is one she brought over later in the day, and look at all the different colors she used, and she just used different ways. She colored up and down, side to side. Look at that, sunshine, you did a beautiful, beautiful job. And last but definitely not least, this comes from their oldest daughter. I'm going to go ahead and call her Princess, because when I look at her, she just looks like a princess, and she brought this over a little bit later in the day. Look at this. L-O-L, -L, named him Rascal, gave me a little heart, and look at, she even did like shading around the outside, very sophisticated, she did shading in multiple places, 
That is so beautiful. And I told them, you know what? I I need to get another dog for Papa. Maybe I'll get one like this. I've had a wiener dog in the past, and they're lovely, wonderful dogs. So, I don't know. Maybe. And this was also made by Princess. I didn't have to block out her name this time. She named this puppy Sweet Lips. And look at that. You know what? I think that's more kind of a dog for me. Look at how cute it is. And she did the shading again and everything. Colored the eyes and the bone. Thank you so much, Princess. So as you can see, my neighbors got some great, great kids. Maybe someday you'll get to see them on film, but I have to ask their parents about that. I absolutely will not film them or anything on their property or anything to do with what, what they're doing over there unless I have their permission. I really wish I could convince them to make their own YouTube channel because let me tell you, they, well, I've already told you their, their house is twice the size of mine. And that guy over there, he can build anything. In fact, his youngest son, I can't, I don't know what I'm going to call him yet. Um, he was sitting out with all of us the other day watching my chickens. And he said, my daddy can build anything. He can fix anything. He can do anything. And I'm like, oh, that is just the cutest thing ever. But he's right. This, the inside of their tiny house is stunning. The modifications he's made are just brilliant. I mean, the staircase alone is a work of art. So maybe someday they'll start their own YouTube channel so that they can kind of show you what they got going on over there. They've done some massive reconstruction and renovation of the ground, and they've cut trails for their kids to ride their bikes. And so they've, they've done an amazing job over there. So you guys do a YouTube channel. I know you'll get subscribers and I know people will be interested in seeing what's going on over there. Anyway, um, the reason why I don't like to use kids' real names on YouTube is because of this reason. Now, years and years ago, when my kid, my grandkids, they had access to a camera and they made these little short videos. They were called Musical.ly. They were 15 seconds long. Well, they used their real first and last names. So a few years later, my mom and dad, their grand, great grandparents, their great grandparents got a phone call and the phone call was kind of like faking a kid voice and they used my grandson's name and said, um, hi grandma and grandpa, this is so-and-so, I've been arrested or something like that, um, I'm in jail and I need some money. Um, can you send me some money? Of course, he wasn't in jail. You know, my parents contacted my son right away. And no, it was it was a scammer trying to scam them out of money. And how they did it, how I think they did it, is they found those videos. They found the grandparents, not the grandparent, because I'm the grandparent. Um, you can't just look me up and find my information. I've been very careful about that. Um my real phone number is not out there uh, but my parents phone number and information is out there so they were able to look for my parents their you know my grandkids great grandparents you know what I'm saying and find their real telephone number and call them up and they waited they either waited until they knew that uh, the kid would be old enough to be able to go out on their own or maybe drive or whatever um, unsupervised from their parents um, and just took a chance called them up and tried to scam some money out of my parents so and, and it could be that the scammers just saw the video um, a couple years ago I guess this happened a couple years ago um, and then just kind of ascertain the age that they would be now and then use that and called my parents and tried to scam them out of money so if you have a YouTube channel, you might want to think twice about not using your kids' real names like Papa Pepper does. He gives all of his kids uh, nicknames. I think that's wise. I think that's the way that it should go because you don't want to expose your kids to any harm and you don't want to expose yourself or your parents or other people in your family whose information might be available out there. You don't want to expose them to possible scammers. So anyhow, there's that. But, okay, so after my rambling, I want to show you some chicken footage, and I think 
one of the baby chickens, uh, of the newest batch of baby chickens, is a rooster, and I'm going to tell you the reasons why. Let's take a look at Torch. Megan had suggested that I call him Flame, but I figured Torch, ah, that's a more powerful word. This is a powerful looking chicken. So this, these are some of the distinguishing factors of what a rooster might present at an early age. Wing feathers come in sooner in females. See that one down there at the bottom? Lots of wing feathers. This is Torch. Look at not as many wing feathers. Nope, definitely not as many. In fact, feathering comes in sooner in females. It's thicker, it's more dense in males, it's patchier. You can see the difference there. And then look at Torch, much less feathers, more patchy. Tail feathers come in sooner in females. You can definitely see a difference, see that? And Torch has practically no tail feathers. I think I got a rooster. If it's a barred rock hen mixed with any brown-headed rooster, baby males will have white spots on their heads and have yellow beaks and legs. Torch definitely has a yellow beak. His legs are pretty yellow. Um, and I didn't notice if he had a white spot on his head when he was a baby, just because Miss Pris wouldn't let me get too close to her or him, whoever. <laughs> but he, he is starting to show signs a rooster-like behavior. It's also been said that in crossbreeds, the feather color of the rooster is passed on to his sons, and the feather color of hens is passed on to their daughters. And I definitely think that Torch's feather coloring is more like Romeo's than it is either a barred rock or a black Asian. So yeah, it's pointing towards rooster. So do you think Torch is a rooster? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.